It was a wonderful promise of endless growth. Of opportunities to harness the earth. And what seemed like its limitless depths. Of the black gold that would run the world. From one end to the other. And even beyond. This is a world racing to be richer and richer. But for this world, even the whole Earth is not enough. The Earth has its limits. And if not respected, it revolves in fearsome ways, through the clouds and the seas. But there is another world, both old and new, that has a habit of finding ways to soothe the tired earth. A way of life that hums with the earth. This hum that is healing the injured earth. These are among the richest forests on the planet. But this abundance is hard-earned. A few decades ago, these forests in northeast India were overexploited. Their woods sold and wildlife hunted down. Until things reached a breaking point and pushed the local people to turn the tide. They voluntarily declared large tracts of community and private areas as protected forests. This is a uh, Sendanyu villages conservation area. We have totally banned uh, hunting, uh, fishing, all agricultural activities, and even collection of vegetables and other uh, forest produces are totally banned. And anybody caught uh, Roaming around in this reserve uh, without uh, our knowledge are penalized. The collective decisions of the community are sacrosanct. Thanks to this wisdom, today Nagaland has nearly 500 community conserved areas that are flourishing without any formal support of the government. This Sukai CCA area is very rich in biodiversity. In this small CCA area, around 450 hectares, we have collected more than 120 species. We have collected like medicinal plant, animal fodders, some trees bear fruit, as well as some for vegetable purpose. This name is Michis. This name is Apikus. This bear name is this biodiversity has returned over 15 long years. However, it can be lost within moments.
While forests around the world are being brutally knocked down, in some parts of India they have flourished because of its people. Ordinary people who can show extraordinary courage. Back in the 1970s, a few women from the northern state of Uttarakhand stunned the world with their daring act to save their forest. When the fellers came to cut them down, they hugged the trees and triggered one of the most famous environmental movements of the world, the Chipko movement. We said that we will go to the tree and we will go to the tree and we will go to the tree. तो उन्होंने सोचे कि हाँ यहाँ तो खदर है अब तब बंद करने तो बिल्कुल ठेका हो गई था जंगल का क्या हमने कहा हमारी जान भी चली जाएगी पर हम अपने जंगल काटने नहीं देंगे हमने उन्होंने कहा जंगल हमारा है पर मैंने कहा हवा पानी मिट्टी किसी के घर की नहीं है the rows go on as far as the eye can see. With a capacity to produce over 600 megawatt, this is Asia's largest solar park in the Thar Desert in India. Today, it is a marvel. But five years ago, a grid-connected solar park was a novel idea with few takers. The government uh, told me when I discussed with the government of Gujarat, we somebody has to take the risk and let us take the uh, take the risk to prove to the world that this is possible because coal we have to pay, gas we have to pay, nuclear we have to pay. But sun is free. Why don't we harness this sun energy in a in a big way? It is the big way. Following Charanka's success, nearly 25 major solar parks are coming up across India's vast deserts and wastelands. India's resources may be scarce, but its ideas are abundant. This canal top solar project on the Narmada Canal in Gujarat, the first such in the world, has avoided the use of precious land and saves millions of litres of water from evaporation. And then there are rooftops. In the city of Gandhinagar, unused rooftops of public and private buildings are feeding electricity into the grid. Taking cue, a host of cities are preparing to tap the sun on their rooftops helping to make the grid more efficient and secure. It's an idea whose time has come. 